Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we have a structural mechanics problem, and here's what the question says. The truss below is supported by a pin and roller. The force in member BF is most nearly, and then we see our four options there available to us in pounds. Um, okay, so the first one, uh, the first step to this is solve for your reactions. And we'll determine what's best here uh, later, whether it's method of joints, method of sections. Um, and, and so speaking of that, let's go ahead and write down the page numbers for that. So the, in the PE manual, uh, you're going to be looking in pages 22 and 23. Uh, just a word of advice, though, these pages are not very helpful. They're good maybe as a refresher if you understand uh, the wording version of this. But personally, it's not that helpful to me. But... Uh, the FE manual, you're going to be looking in page 110 for that. The first step is solve for the reactions. And so we have a pen on this left side. It says pen right there. Uh, but even if it doesn't include that, that wordage there, we notice it's kind of small. But even if it doesn't include that wordage, uh, we, we can identify it by this triangle. And then we see a roller over here on the other side. is going to be a circle with a platform underneath it. So if you remember from class, uh, a pin will have a Y component, and so we're going to call this a Y, and then it also has an X component, a X, and then a roller. Well, it's only constrained in the Y, so it's going to have a reaction force in the Y direction, and so that's why it's H Y. Um, so we have everything that we really need. Now we can take the moment and solve for H Y, and so we're going to take the moment. Uh, some of the moments at point A, so I'm going to write at point A, uh, this is going to be our positive moment in the counterclockwise direction. If you don't remember that, use your right hand rule. You can, uh, if you're writing down something on a piece of paper, your hand will, if you're right handed anyways, your hand will curl towards the left. So that's the direction that we're going to call a positive moment. This is equal to zero. This is going to be equal to a negative moment because we have a force that's contradicting our right hand moment we're taking a moment at point a right here uh, we have this 1300 pounds pushing against our hand remember we're turning counterclockwise and so it's pushing against it so it's a negative moment uh, times our perpendicular distance of that force which is five feet times the force which is 1300 pounds and then uh, we have another negative moment minus 15 feet because we have 20 feet here we understand this is 5 feet this is 5 feet this is 5 feet and this is 5 feet so that uh, 1000 pounds is pushing against us again so that's a negative moment we're going to multiply that by 1000 pounds alrighty and then we have a positive we assumed a direction with the roller we assume that it's going to be acting up which makes sense uh, and then we're going to add, so since it's a positive moment now, we're going to add our 20 feet, our perpendicular distance of 20 feet times our roller, or our, uh, yeah, our reaction force, so HY. So whenever, uh, and that's going to be equal to zero, we established that at the beginning. Uh, whenever you solve for HY, you end up with 1075, so 1075 pounds. So we assume the correct direction because our force ends up being positive. If it was negative, that would mean that it's acting down. It makes sense that our roller is actually acting uh, opposite of the truss because the truss is pushing on the roller. We're pushing back up with the roller uh, to support this truss. So that makes sense. Um, and so now let's go ahead and do sum of forces in the Y to solve for AY. So we're going to say sum of forces in the Y is equal to zero. And that is equal to a y uh, minus 1300 pounds because it's acting in the negative direction uh, minus 1000 pounds because it's acting in the negative direction plus our h y which if you remember that that's going to be 1075 pounds all right and so when we solve for h or a y when we solve for a y you end up with 1225 now we have everything that we really needed uh, we have all our unknowns we know what a y is we know what h y is uh, there's no forces in the x direction so this a x is actually zero no force in the x direction um, okay and, and so let's identify the member that we need to solve b f 
So BF is going to be this guy. And uh, what's going to be the best way to attack that? Well, it's going to be method of sections. Uh, you can do method of joints, but it may take you a while. But we're going to do method of sections. We're going to make our cut right here. And so we're going to expose all of these forces, BC, BF, uh, and then EF. So I'm going to draw a free body diagram underneath here. All right, so we're back. We have our A, our point A right here. We have B, which has 1,300 pounds applied to it. And then we have our exposed forces. So the force BC, uh, the force and member BF, and the force and member EF. We, we need to solve for this guy. And so what's the best way to do that? We, we can kind of think this through several different ways. You can take the moment at A, but really what you want to do for this is cancel out as many unknowns as you can. And you can really get carried away and overthink this. You can think that you can take the moment at B and solve for F, E, F, and then take, you know, solve for the forces in X. And then, you know, you could do that long way around. We're trying to solve for this quickly, uh, the F, E, and the P, E. And so we need to think logically here, what's going to be the quickest way to do that? Notice our only unknown in the Y direction is F, B, F. FBC is uh, going in the right X direction, FEF is going in the X direction. So if we take the sum of forces in the Y, the only unknown we have is the force in member BF, and that's what we're solving for. So that's what we're gonna do here. Uh, let's take the for sum of forces in the Y is equal to zero. So now this is our new truss that we're gonna uh, an analyze right here. So this guy's gonna be 12, 12, or 1225 pounds. Uh, minus 1300 pounds and then we have a minus um, something else that I missed here is the Y distance right here this is actually going to be 8 feet uh, based off the initial diagram we see that it's 8 feet right here and it's the total length so we're going to use 8 feet we can make a triangle out of this just to show you guys a little trick here uh, we can make a triangle out of FBF. Here's our FBF. Here is our distance. Here's our distance. This is 5 feet. This is 8 feet. What is this guy? Well, it's the square root of 89. And so, um, and so basically a quick trick right here. You don't have to use sine. You don't have to use cosine. You can just use this relationship. Uh, if you're wanting to solve in the x direction, you can use 5 over the square root of 89, and it will proportion out your force uh, to be equivalent in the x direction, and vice versa. For the y direction, you can use 8 over the square root of 89, and it will proportion the force um, the appropriate way to where you can solve for the force in the y direction. So that's what we're going to do here, is uh, we're going to have our 8 over our square root of 89. And then we're going to multiply that by the force in member BF. Notice FBF's are only unknown here. So FBF is going to be equal to, if you solve for that, we end up with negative 88.44 pounds. And so, hey, while I've got you here, if you already enrolled in one of the courses at civilengineeringacademy.com, keep it up. You can do this. If you haven't, I encourage you to go to civilengineeringacademy.com to check out some awesome practice exams and resources to help you pass your FE and PE exams the first time. So with that said, uh, we get a negative number here. So this is interesting. The, the assumed direction that we had was down. And so since this force is a negative, that actually means that our assumed direction is wrong. So really this guy, instead of acting in compression, is actually acting in tension it's pulling it's actually acting towards B so let's scroll up and let's see 88.44 none of these answers are negative the reason why they're not negative is because we assumed a direction it doesn't ask us to solve for the direction is it in tension is it in compression although that may be a question they ask you in the FE or PE exams be prepared to answer that is this member in tension or compression you may have to answer that and in this case this guy is going to be acting in tension because we assumed it was going to be here's your member we assumed it was going to be in compression so doing something like this well actually doing something like this it's pulling against the rope basically if you're in a tug of war that's what we're doing 
So it's actually in tension. So the answer to this one's gonna be A. So I hope this video helps and we'll catch you next time.